hey guys welcome back to another episode so in this episode we are going to be building a game called work more game so i think you guys have heard of this and then most of you guys have a pretty good idea how this game works right so let's check out the end game so we have a start button then when you click on it you will show that okay the game will expire in this much seconds or after three misses so once three misses is done the game over you can start again and then when you hit on a bear the score gets increased all right so you can play until the remaining time right so basically this is what we're gonna build so let's get right into it so i have opened a project folder for me and then i'm gonna create an index.html file as always i'm gonna be copying an html file which i have already created i will link you guys in the description so that you can use it instead of actually working in the HTML and CSS, we can right go to the editing part of script file, JavaScript file, right? So I'm gonna also create a style.css file, which I will also copy it from. You can get the these files from the link. All right, then I'm gonna also create a script.js file. Okay, I'm gonna check if that's working. Hello. All right. So if you notice the HTML part, it's purely basic. As you can see, we only have a single div container. Inside the div container, you have nine basically grid elements, which is I'm calling it, I'm assigning a whole class also. And then you have a score element, countdown element, and then game over element. And then you also have your start button, all right? And then I'm using style.js and script.js. So let's check if this is working. Let's go live and then yeah. So this is working. Let me all right. Let me check my console. Yeah, so hello is loaded, which means that part is working. So let's check what happens if we press on start game. Yeah, start game is now defined. So let's dive right into it. So first things first, I'm gonna get all the elements from the HTML so that we can reuse it throughout the JavaScript file. So I'm gonna get the area element, which is game area. And then I'm gonna get the score element, which is get element by ID. And then just have a ID of score. And then I will also get the countdown element document dot get element by id which has a id of countdown again so i'm gonna paste that and then i'll also get the game over l document dot get element by id which also has an id of game dash over so i'm gonna copy that and paste over here and then i will get our start button element start button l document dot query selector it has a class of start button and glow on hover so i'm going to just use this particular class and then like so and then i will also get the holes like all the all the grid elements we have created right so we need to access it later in the game so what i will do is i will do document dot get elements by class name and then it has a class of hole. So I'm gonna get the whole elements using get elements by class name, and then I'm gonna convert this into an array using the spread operator. So this will give me an array of all the elements I have. Yeah, so each element is identified in the whole element. All right, so we can also initialize our score variable then also our miss variable and then let miss maximum threshold you can call it maximum miss threshold that makes more sense right and then we will give it as three as of now and then also our total game duration how long do you want this game to particularly run so i'm gonna say it as 20 seconds as of now okay and then let's get into the game itself function to 
start the game right so if you notice our button is directly calling this particular function which is start game so whenever you click on the function whenever you click on the button this function will get invoked so we will initialize the timer let's call it initialize game timer and then let's create that part to initialize the function game timer right inside that we will use a set interval to get that set interval we will assign that set interval into a variable so that we can reuse it later on for now let's build the set interval and then this will repeat every seconds so and our countdown right so in the set interval if you noticed we have to show this particular game like as the time goes on right so when the time is getting updated so for that we will use this particular set interval so for that to happen we need to show this um, element first so we will set the style of display to block and then we will change the value count on dot x content equal to your game will end in and then we will use template literal and then game duration or let's say game duration seconds or you can say after famous okay so that makes sense right and then after this we should also reduce our game duration timer i mean game duration counter so we have set the game duration counter to 20 so after each second it should reduce by one and then we can assign this to a variable let's call it countdown interval okay so we should initialize this countdown interval as well as a global variable so that later on we can clear it once the game is done so i will initialize to null first and then the counter interval is set so we should also check one more thing in here what if the game duration gets to zero right so we should check condition for that as well so we should end the game here in the game here and clear all the intervals basically resetting the thing right so for now i will just return we can later on call in game function which we will create later on right for now let's create here okay so let's check if that part is working start game yeah so your game will end in 19 seconds 18 seconds or after three months okay and then now we have initialized the game timer then i will also create a variable called game running so when the start game happens the game running variable should set to true so initially it will be false so I set it up false initially and then when the game starts to run we will set it to true and then we will also change the start button element to be hidden once the game starts so we can play distraction free right so i'm gonna set start button style display to none and then we will also hide the game overall by default it's actually hidden but let's say you are coming back after you lose the game then we should also hide it once you press on start game button right all right so that's done now we have to show the bear like from for each second or maybe based on the difficulty we can reduce the time which is being shown right so for now i will again create another search interval which will call a function called peak bear okay peak bear and then we will get the peak interval from a function okay and then i'm going to assign this to another variable so that we can clear it 
we will call that variable peak pale peak pair interval and then we will do the same for this one as well peak pair interval equal to null okay so now this is done now we have to create this particular function so let's create that function function to show the bear based on time given function peak bear okay so initially we will check if the game is actually running so if game is running what we will do is um, we will get a random index from the holes we have already created right so for that we will use math.floor and then math.seal inside math.random inside it so math.fall math.floor basically and then random you are getting a random variable and then you multiply into the whole stored length so this particular holes we have accessed over here so when you do a random on top of it you get a value of that particular length itself and then you get the nearest integer nearest lowest integer of that value so now you have the random index at your hand now we will just display a bear on top of that particular index so whole equal to holes of random index and then what we'll do is all dot class list dot add bear emoji so i have set up a css for this particular bear emoji if you look at the bear emoji class we have a before and then this is the unique code equivalent of a bear emoji so i'm just calling that particular i'm just adding that, that particular class and then it will automatically it should automatically show up okay so let's check if that's working start content get peak and is not defined all right so for now we will create a function for that function to get interval time based on the difficulty function get peak interval so we will just return for now we will return let's say two seconds for now all right then check now so every two seconds here yeah, the bear is coming up all right so that part is working as expected and then what we can do is we will so if you notice all the bears are like still there it's not going back so we will create a set timeout function which will after let's say one second it will it will be here and the bear emoji should be removed right so we have access to the whole element then we will use all dot class list dot remove bear emoji and then this should check let's say 800 milliseconds so instead of one second i'm actually checking for 800 milliseconds all right so let's check that if working so yeah after like almost 800 like 800 milliseconds it's removing so that's done now whenever you click on it see the vac event is not defined so if you notice each of this particular hole is calling vac event on click right so we will create that particular function as well function click event on bear function vac i think it's passing out a event variable yeah so it's passing an event variable so we have an event variable and then the first check will be if game running we have to check if the game is actually running or it stopped so if the game is running then what we'll do is we will get the vac event target so for that we will get the whole l as event dot target and then let's check if it's actually it giving giving us the same element so when you start the game and then you press on so yeah it, it's giving us the same element so that part is working and then what we will do is 
I will check if that particular hall l dot class list dot contains bear emoji right so the bear emoji will be removed within 800 milliseconds so if the user has actually clicked on it with before 800 milliseconds then he should get a score for it so we'll increase the score and then we will also set the score l load text content as score has been updated right so score and then the actual score value itself score l we have already defined at top it's like yeah so let's check if that's working start game yeah score is getting updated all right so if if it doesn't have one then we should update the miss variable because like he, the user didn't actually manage to click on that particular call at the given time so we already have we also have a miss variable so that case is done so that's the logic for the back event right so if what what happens if the miss event is actually greater than uh, maximum threshold we have set so we have to check that one as well right so for that we will go to the peak pair here in this function we'll also check if miss is actually equal to the maximum miss threshold then we will call the function end game and then return from there we don't want to show it right so for that to happen we will go here and then we will create a function for ending the game function to end the game and then function end game so inside the end game what we have to do is we have to clear those intervals we have created before so we remember if you create if uh, we have created the countdown interval and then peak bear interval so we will clear both of these intervals so clear interval countdown interval and then clear interval peak bear interval so both of them are done right so now we have removed it and then we will also set the countdown element dot style dot display to none because we don't we no longer require it we have entered the game so we'll set it to none and then the game over element we have to display it now because the game has ended so we will set the game over dot style dot block equal to block i mean not block basically display equal to block and then game over l dot text content we will say game over the score you have scored is the score value so after this is done we will set the score value to zero again and then the miss value to zero and then game duration also to 20 right yeah, it's just 20 yeah so we'll set the game duration to 20 and then we have to bring back our start button element so style dot display equal to block so this should give us all the necessary things we have okay and then if the game duration ends we have it automatically call the end game Let's check how it's working. So I didn't manage to score. This one I managed to score. This one, let's miss something. All right. So three misses should me should give us. So yeah, if you notice, I haven't pressed on anything, and then I have missed more than three. But still, the game didn't actually trigger it. So we have to write the logic for even if the user do, doesn't click on anything, the miss counter should actually work. So for that, after the set timeout, like we are clearing the emoji, right? We are removing the whole list. So before, uh, after that, we will set uh, clear, uh, use another set timeout, which will take, what it will do is, it will check if, the user haven't created an event any event and then we will listen it for like let's say 800 milliseconds the same one as this one 
and then within 800 milliseconds if we have an triggered any click event then we have to increase the ms plus plus because it's an automatic failure right so for that um, like in in certain cases if the user has actually managed to click on it then we will assign it to a global variable which we will define over here let miss timer equal to null so if the user actually managed to click it we have to actually clear this particular interval before it actually triggers so when that happens on the vac event we will check if no we have to clear the uh, interval if the vac event actually happens because that vac event is actually a click event which is directly associated with the whole so we can directly call miss timer to clear it to be cleared okay so i think this should automatically work let's check so if i don't press anything for the first three ones it should give me game over on the fourth one yeah let's get game over score zero start game so that logic is also working so the next one would be let's check if the whole thing is working yeah so the next one would be the get peak and double thing so let's say you want to increase the difficulty level after you reach maybe let's say 10, uh, 10 score right so if you want to increase the difficulty based on the like score you have reached then you can kind of write a game logic over here in a way like this one so i'm thinking if score is actually greater than or equal to zero and and score is less than or equal to 10 then what i will do is i will return the time to be updated as two seconds else if the score is actually greater than or equal to 11 and and score is less than or equal to 20 in that case i will return 1.5 second else i will return close to as 1.1 second which is a pretty good time for a user to click on it right so let's check if this logic is also working okay one two oh, i didn't register the click okay three four five six seven eight okay so i think either i need to increase the time limit or i need to change the value over here let's say three to maybe seven and then seven all right so now let's check change this to five start game and then one two three four five six seven eight nine so still this is doable right so let's reduce the number to maybe 700 sec milliseconds this one i will reduce it to 1100 and this one we can reduce it to 1500 all right let's start game Five, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, yeah, this seems like a good speed. So, let's check quickly if this is actually being triggered, right? So, get peak interval. We have it over here. So, I'm gonna just check if that interval is actually being triggered at the same time. So get console log get peak interval. So one thousand five hundred is the initial point, and then once we reach, yeah, one thousand one hundred. So that is working, and then seven hundred. All right, so that makes sense. All right, guys. So that's it for the video. 
um if you guys notice there is a small bug over here i i wouldn't call it as a bug but like it's a feature we can and has enhance actually so in this particular game you can actually multiply the score you are getting if you use a certain like workaround so you can actually test it out and then if you figure it out let me know in the comments then what can you do to avoid that also just let me know then if you guys are not able to do it then i can do a follow-up video on it so until then keep coding i'll see you guys in another one